So you may be asking yourself, why am I so focused on games in practice? And the reason is we want our players to feel confident when they go and step on that field during a competition. And they're gonna be confident in their abilities, in their physical abilities and their mental abilities if we give them the resources to do that and the skills to do that. And the best way to do to get a player ready for a game is to be practicing game situations. And if we want them to perform well and have confidence and be able to take risks while on the playing field in a competition, then we need to let them know what it's like to play a game. And we do that by playing games in practice. There are gonna be three types of games that we play. Full games, modified games, and fun games. A full game is just like it sounds. It's an actual game of football, an actual game of hurling, actual game of camogie. It has all the same rules, all the same equipment, all the same players, and takes up the same amount of time. A modified game looks like a full game, except we've made some changes. We've changed something in the rules, we've changed something in the equipment, the players, and the time. So an example of this would be maybe a game that can only use ground hurling. We've changed the rules. The example may also be backs and forwards. We've changed the players. We're always usually playing, changing the time as well. Modified games. We modify something about a full game to create a new game. Fun games. Don't let the name fool you. You can create a fun game that is very taxing for players physically and mentally. But a fun game is going to look different than a full game or a modified game. It's not going to look very much like a game of hurling, football, or camogie. It's going to use rules. It's going to have equipment. There's going to be players and time. But it's going to be more specific in nature and may focus on one or two aspects of a skill or of a game than a full or modified game. The three T's and the three P's. It's how we make our players better. These are the things that we're looking for in our players so that we can determine how much they need, how much they have, and what we can do to bring both of those two things together. So, just through a quick review, the three P's, playing facts, that's basically the knowledge of the rules, physical fitness, it's pretty obvious, and then psychological focus, it's kind of the mental game that we talk about. The three T's, team play, tactical awareness, I sometimes say game sense, and then technical proficiency, it's basically the skills and your ability to do them. So when we watch our players in a game, we're looking for this. We're looking to see how much playing facts they have, what's their physical fitness, what's their psychological focus, are they playing as a team, do they know what they should be doing or where they should be, how good are they skill-wise, okay? When we watch them play games, fun, modified, or full, this is what we're looking for in our players. The reason why we want to look at that is you want to think of your player as having these buckets, okay? You have six buckets. Each bucket represents one of three T's, one of three P's. And so if we know that one of our players, their knowledge of playing facts is full, or our team has is very knowledgeable about playing facts, then we don't have to concentrate on that. But they may lack a physical fitness. So when we develop our games and our practices and our drills, we want to make sure that we include physical fitness, okay? Same thing might be their psychological focus. It might be low, so that's something we need to concentrate. But maybe their team play is great. Absolutely great team play. They play as a team all the time. They, they know where everybody is. That's great. We don't have to focus on that as much. So when we develop a game or a drill, we're not developing it as so necessarily for team play, but we want to focus on one of these two, these other things that they're maybe lacking in. Same thing with technical proficiency. Some of our higher teams may have great skills, and that's what we're looking for. And so we don't need to necessarily do all these skill drills all the time. We have their buckets already full. What they may, what they, what they have in excess here, they may lack in technical awareness. And how do we get better at technical awareness? We play games, okay? So people know what a game sense is. So that's what you want to think about when you're talking about the three T's and the three P's and how they can relate directly to you when you're trying to figure out what games to come up with during practice and then what drills to feed off of. You've heard me say a million times how much I hate drills but that's not necessarily true. Drills are excellent for complementing games. 
and that's the way they should be used. You have your game, you observe what's needed from your players, and you create a drill or have a drill ready so that that will help them enhance their skills in, during the game. So this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. And this is the important part about being a coach. It, what makes you different than someone who's just running a game, running a practice, running a drill. The way we become coaches is by using the three P's and the three T's in a drill and in a game. So what I want you to always understand is that we first start out with a game and it can be a full, modified, or fun game, all right? It's something you create to put out there for your players and then you are going to be a coach and observe what they're doing. All right, what are they looking like in the three T's? What are they looking like in the three P's? Your observations are going to tell you and inform you on how to move on to the next step and that's making the drill, all right? So an example, if you have a possession game, that's a fun game, a possession game, and the players are not striking the ball well, the hand passes are really off, okay? And you're observing this as a coach, you see that their movement is really good, their spacing is good, their communication is wonderful, but the, the, the movement or the skill itself of the hand pass is not working out. Okay, well now you've just used your knowledge as a coach and your observation to inform you on what you're going to do next, and that's get into a drill. You let the game go for about five minutes, the next thing we do is a drill. And you know what we need to work on, it's a hand pass. So you can create a hand pass drill, or you may have a hand pass drill um, in mind already, to get the skill. We're gonna work on the, the skill itself, okay? That's the technical proficiency. We're working on the skill of the hand pass, all right? Get the players used to the skill. You're gonna do that just for a short period of time, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes into a drill, and then we go back into the game, the same game that you were playing, okay? And you're gonna observe then did the hand passes get better? They should have, okay? Did they get better? How did they get better? What else do your, does the team need? And that is coaching. So here's what I want you to prepare for the 26th of March. I want you to prepare one game, hurling game, football game, doesn't matter to me, prepare one game. We'll be doing it for about five minutes, and then I want you to prepare one drill. And the drill can be anything. You may want to have a couple drills in your back pocket just in case, but at least have one drill that we're going to then use to complement the game that we had played. Okay, that's it. I'm looking forward to it. it should be really fun. We've had some really great um, reviews about our last practical session, and so I think this one will be just as good. So I'll see you March 26th.